Okay, hello everyone and welcome again to the second video of the Megalab series in the English version for the CCNA exam 20301 number, the new one of 2020. Uh, this series, as you may, you may have watched it before in the previous video, in the first Megalab, or maybe you have no idea about it, this series is all about three videos. Each one of them will be of big implementations of big labs with a ton of devices uh, a minimum of six up to eight protocols in one single lab applied to all the devices and in the end the target will be that everyone will be able to see everyone and so on uh, this series should have been out of four labs actually and in the fourth lab there should be have me a bit sure there should have been a bit of management and access list skills for security but time will never be enough because of preparation and recording for the new CCMP Enterprise, uh, what we call it, the INCOR uh, exam, which is an exam that can be that can participate in two certificates, the CCMP Enterprise and the CCI Enterprise Infrastructure. Okay, in this second lab, and actually the second goal of this series of three videos are to use some protocols that have been removed from the CCNA, the original, the new CCNA course, okay? Uh, like uh, HSRP, uh, SVI, Switch Virtual Interface, Router on Stick, ROS for Dynamic Intervillian Routing. It's true that RIP, EIGRP, and VTP have also, BGP and uh, VTP have also been removed from the CCNA, but uh, those are not, not really that important for a CCNA guy to know. Uh, what's important for a CCNA engineer to know is actually the, really the HSRP, router on a stick, and switch virtual interface, the SVI. Those three are really, really important because all the companies in the world, not all, most of them, a lot of them are still using those in their entire networks. And when they hire a Cisco certified engineer, they would expect him to know what are those protocols and how to operate them. At least how to verify, um, but so do some simple troubleshooting or, or implementation regarding those uh, protocols so it would be unfortunate if you are a ccna certified engineer and you really have no idea about dynamic intervillian routing or intervillian routing protocols like ROS and svi and also at least hsrp out of the fhrp family so let's solve out, let's solve that in the first megalab video you will find it megalab number one the english one not the arabic because there are also the already the arabic videos are published since a month ago or two uh, the first video discussed the router on a stick and implemented it completely in this second video there will be a lot of protocols yes correct uh, those a lot of protocols all of them are part of the new CCNA but the one exterior protocol that we will use that is out of the scope of the new CCNA will be switch virtual interface for today and this is uh, will be all about how to connect how to route or interconnect multiple VLANs if you have no route if you have a router then you will use a router on a stick ROS if the company could not afford a router it was a switch then at least make it a multi-layer switch or a layer 3 switch and use SVI okay uh, today's lab will be twice as big as the previous one and twice as big as the next coming third lab this will be the biggest one and it will contain a lot DHCP, DHCP relay, link topology, uh, VLANs, SVI, ether channel uh, multi-area OSPF not a single area you will see the difference and ABRs area border routers and I hope that you will enjoy that okay so let's start by building our lab or network for today I believe that I have already disabled numbering yep show port labels to start today and I will start first with a lot of switches to build my first ring which is in the headquarter or actually is the first region that I live in and as an engineer I work and operate that ring uh, network okay so that will be this way some sort of six switches those six switches are or five switches that all of them go back to the main root bridge I will make it a root bridge if it was not so we will manipulate spanning tree you will see that 
this is extremely important for an engineer also and since this one will be the root guy then it will forward the traffic to the closest layer 3 or distribution switch which will be here okay so this is what will happen is that a multi-layer switch will be here at this place and this one does contain some gigabit ethernet interface yes that would be important let me do it options preferences and there are some titles that are not really the model yeah the model is not important that would be better to clear it more okay so switch one i need switch zero actually let's make it the first one and then switch one um switch two is that really necessary no but hopefully that it will automatically become the root okay this way those are six switches that will be connected in a way of one minute ring so they are closed that would make them a ring and then spanning tree will definitely operate itself because a loop might happen here a layer two loop and since all of those are using a fast ethernet so the 100 megabit is traveling maybe from this way to this way 100 megabit in this half of uh, the ring maybe this part okay thank you i'd have to restart my annoying pen just like in every beginning of every lab or video i'm sorry okay now it's restarted yeah so the idea will be in real life networking is that this half itself could need or consume or have 100 megabit of data traveling per second this other half might also be 100 meg so it will be unwise to have also 100 megabit per second uh, bandwidth or port in this uplink this part or this link here that collects all your data all your data of your link and uploaded it to the main data center or distribution layer because you were in the access layer then this link will be called the up link okay and mostly if you are already an engineer and you are familiar with that you will know that mostly more than 80 percent of the cases whenever there is an up link it will definitely be or will definitely have a higher bandwidth or speed than the ring itself so if this one was 100 megabit then at least let's make the uplink at 200 megabit per second in speed in regarding of speed okay that would be cool and that will be enough 200 megabit twice as the ring capacity will be good so we will guarantee that if there was 100 meg traveling this way like collecting from devices here here and here and going to the root bridge this way and another 100 maybe like from this way this way this way going there then 100 again will not be enough here so 200 megabit at least would be good how to achieve a 200 megabit uplink uh, if you are familiar with chapter 2 and you have studied it then you would know that we would definitely need an ether channel a layer 2 ether channel okay I hope it is okay okay so this will be considered as a spanning tree uh, enabled by default also why because there might a, a loop might happen also here so until we enable ether channel on both those devices it will be a spanning tree enabled you see one is still amber the other guy is turned on green so no problem until now i have no problem okay i will monitor that or i will fix that later what will happen to that multi-layer switch is that you know that in the exam in the course we have always talked about design and three tier networks and in three tier networks you have the access layer those guys here those all of them are access layer and they are mostly or all of them are layer two devices using layer two technologies like spanning tree vlans that's it okay and then you have the distribution layer or the distribution device which is this guy or with the facing the lay access layer it will use layer two protocols here like ether channel without ips and from the other side 
facing the core which is mostly yes a router then it will use a layer 3 technology so this device will be split into two halves one will be a layer 2 talking to those people the other one will be three talking to this master here okay this guy okay so i will you will see that i will enable both layer 2 and layer 3 technologies on this device layer 2 like ether channel trunking and vlans layer 3 will be like ip and ospf okay as simple as that no more yeah more yeah a bit more something tricky that i will show you uh, in this lab but you will love it okay so until now we are good so this axis is connected to this distribution this distribution layer should be connected to a core layer so would you please go to the market and buy me what to make it what to make it what to make it let's make it a gigabit ethernet capable device like 2911 because 2911 have three gigabit ethernet interfaces and 3560 switch also have at least two gigabit ethernet devices so i will be able to connect a gigabit interface between those two guys this is all what's happening about from here to here so far and i hope that so far we are clear so this is my first ring my that contains an access layer distribution layer a core layer all of that should be good so this will be named the core of our ring one okay this should be the agg the aggregation of ring one agg i mean aggregation i mean the distribution device it's also called the aggregation uh, and that's it okay for now uh, the truth is that you all as an engineer i will have to tell you some might be good or bad news that you are responsible for two rings not the, not just this one another one and the reason also or another trick there will be is that one of the rings will depend on another link and something very important you will see that in minutes okay so this first link i have selected all the devices access distribution and core and then control c i click control v come here please this is another link that have just been operated don't worry no config is there so far so i did not took, take anything with it okay so let's move them a bit further uh this way let's make it yeah that far go ahead goodbye and let's rename it as core of r2 ring 2 and aggregation of ring 2 i don't give a care about the naming of those devices here no problem you can change that later okay so far so good a bit of fast forwarding everything is green thanks a lot how will these two cores get connected they will go back to the data center actually all, both of them should be in the data center and they should connect to that edge router the biggest guy there which is also of the same model the 2911 the 2911 will have three gigabit interfaces one for this core the other for this core and the third will go to the internet with nat that should be enough no internet and nothing will be in this lab because so far starting the application of this lab will take at least 90 minutes in the arab version it was a complete two hours lab okay let's hope for a shorter period today okay so let's connect the last connection that i need that would be good and let's start the kickoff okay so the first thing will be i will have um three vlans that will swim over this ring or flood here like vlan 11 vlan um 12 vlan 13 for this place i hope that the text is clear uh the video is already recorded in full hd with 60 frames so i hope that you would zoom in or have a big screen also vlan 21 for the second link not the same vlans i will make it different because each one of them is separated yes each one of them will never be able to see each others or they will not have a duplicate vlan the reason why is that there is a third a third layer or a layer three technology in the way that will <laughs> cut this entire broadcast domain from the other guy and will neglect layer two technologies start dealing with layer three technologies so no problem but i will make it vlan 22 
and VLAN 23 because all what this lab will be about is interconnecting those VLANs. Okay, make it at the heart. Make it at the heart. Thank you. This way. Okay, that should be good so far. Okay. One other thing will be will be what VLANs should flood here. VLANs should flood here. Uh, yeah, we will definitely need the end devices to test our job. So uh, here I have six switches. Those two switches, switch 0 and 1, will be accessed for VLAN 11. Those two will be for VLAN 12. Those two will be for VLAN uh, 13. Here I will have two devices for connected to two switches for VLAN 21, two for VLAN 22, and for VLAN 23. So let's make it this way. Let's make it this way. Not you. Definitely not. Let's make it this way. Okay, and for this guy here, I would like to make it away. You here, you, three, four, five. And unfortunately, I will have to start extending cables. I will later access them per their VLAN and see if all the VLANs will be able to be connected to all the other VLANs. And you can add 20 PC per 20 end device per switch, whatever you like. But just one will be enough for today, just to show you the example. Okay, I would like to make you here, just like to be a mirror for both sides. Good. So should we start implementing? Yes, we can. Number one will be uh, something simple: is that give VLANs, identify and create VLANs inside the switches. Make your interfaces trunks between the switches. Access all your interfaces in the switches that are heading to the PCs to become. Come on, make it green. Yeah, thank you. To make it all accessed, that would be a layer two job. Uh, eliminate this guy here. The the, the, the yellow thing. Uh, preferences. Let's hide something for one minute. And I'm talking about this. Okay, this uh, amber color. Eliminate it how? By eliminating the need for spanning tree and making this or bundling these two and these two in an aggregate aggregation bundling or an ether channel actually and then life should be good okay uh, so let's do that okay let's start with those switches what i will do in that switch will be is that i will create by the way i will have to create all the three vlans in between all those six switches to allow the frames to travel tagged between all those six switches should i also do that in this place no i should not enable six vlans here and six vlans here three and three for this tagging the reason why is that there are already layer three uh, separating them layer three technologies between them so no need for that just do three vlans for this ring in between it three vlans for this ring in between it and the trick to solve the issue i will show you in minutes so let's start with this one okay so this is switch this switch will be enable um configure terminal create vlan 11 and give it the name um ring one vlan 11 okay and then vlan 12 will be ring one vlan 12 and then vlan 13 Ring 1 VLAN 13. That should be good. Show VLAN brief. Then you have it this way 11, 12, 13. Of course, nothing is accessed so far. Leave it. We will discuss that in a minute. Okay, so step number one creating the VLANs and giving them a name for this switch. Step number two for this switch will be to make fast ethernet 01 02 as trunks okay so you will notice something very important and that will be every switch right here in this topology have fast ethernet 01 and 02 connected to the other switch 
So whenever you see a fast Ethernet and what was zero one and zero two and this these six switches, then you know that they should be trunks. Okay, because it's just a coincidence that all of them. Let's make sure of something. Yes, fast Ethernet zero one and zero two. Whenever there is a fast Ethernet zero one and zero two in this topology, then all of them should become trunks. The reason why it's guaranteed because I have started connecting them uh, simultaneously, so I've guaranteed that all of them will be fast Ethernet zero one and two, zero one zero two, zero one zero two, and in this way. I mean, okay. So let's make. Okay, configure terminal. Let's make interface range fast Ethernet 0, 1 and 2 as trunks switch port mode trunk done yes done exit and we are good with that so far leave it and next what do we need next uh, to access something on a specific VLAN I will prefer to do that separately later because there will be difference in that but at least a unified type of config is that we need to create three VLANs give names to three VLANs give fast Ethernet 0, 01 0, 01 and 0, 02 trunk for those three VLANs okay I hope that is okay for you okay so let's complete that uh, what I've just done to this switch should be Duplicated, replicated, and be done again and configured again for all those three devices. Will you enter or log in each of those five again and do the same config? Either yes or no. So it's either I take my config, leave this one, let's maximize that to understand correct. Maybe I will take those. Copy them, have a notepad, paste them. I will leave config T, okay, then create VLAN 11, give it the name of link 11, and then create VLAN 12, give it the name of 12, VLAN 13, give it a name. And then do not end, make it an exit. Why? Because I will hit then interface range fast ethernet 0, 1 to 2 switch port mode trunk end. How about that? Okay, just make sure that when you create a script that you will copy and paste in your entire device, this is considered as type of basic simple automation. When you have one script that you are sure of it and you will paste it in your device in all of your own devices, this will be much faster than logging every time and keep using the keyboard. Okay, so create VLAN 11 with a name, 12 with a name, 13 with a name, exit the VLAN mode config, enter a switch uh, and interface mode config, and make them or change them. Okay, so that would be um, one last thing is that when I in log in. By default, it's user mode. So let's make it enable in the beginning. Okay, copy. Let's save our config here by hitting right. Okay, and let me go back to my, I'm sorry, notepad. And also, I would like to save my config. Okay, so copy. Log into this guy here. CLI, big screen, and just do a paste. Everything go ahead. Okay, how to make sure of that? I will tell you show VLAN brief Everything is good and show interface trunk Everything is also good. Thanks a lot and it has been saved automatically also because we have typed the um, Sorry the WR and you are also thank you Escape that you see how simple is that? And we will do it to the second one also, the second ring. Yep, thank you. That would be good. CLI, uh, paste. Yes. The last one will be here. That will be paste. Yep. Done. With a fast forwarding. More. More, everything is green, everything is good, everything is trunk, no problem. Of course, Spanning Tree will still operate whether it was trunk or access. This will not affect the looping, okay, this way. 
and we are done with ring number one just for creating okay so the next step will be is that each interface here should be accessed to its own vlan i have to do that manually this will be annoying let's do that so configure terminal one interface here which is fast ethernet 05 so let's make it interface fast ethernet 05 switch port mode access and switch port access to vlan uh, 11 and thank you and escape that fast ethernet 03 here for this switch will also be access to 11 so config t interface fast ethernet 03 switch port mode access and switch port taxes to vlan i'm um, sorry uh, 11 uh, there was another trick that would help us a lot in automation and scripting will be uh, before I connect this switch to this guy, I should have created all the PCs and connect all the PCs here uh, to the switches so that I will guarantee that whenever there is a switch connected to a PC, it will be through FastFM03, which is arrange them simultaneously. Okay, that would make it easy because we could have added the script of interface FastFM03, switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN. Uh, such thing and we will just just change the number of the VLAN every time and keep pasting the commands you can do whatever you like you can print it all manually by yourself to strengthen your skills whatever you like you can do it all okay so this one will be for VLAN um, 12 these two switches interface fast ethernet 03 uh, switch port mode access and access to VLAN 12 I would like Please to copy it because it will be identical to the next switch, also via fast Ethernet 03, and also this one. But thank you. So now, now Packtracer copies everything without using its plane. Okay, I'll do it myself. 03 to VLAN um, 12. Okay, and and for these two guys, they should be on 13. Also, 03 for both of them. Good coincidence. To VLAN 13 and. The end okay so far so good uh, bit of fast forwarding will make everything green again thank you thanks a lot uh, we are done for inter vlan and uh, in the the inside of the ring working i hope that this was good so far there is someone out there shouting <laughs> i hope that you are not listening to it to her okay so again uh, VLANs have all been um, modified and created with names, good. And then what do we need more? What do we need more? We will need, I will tell you. Uh, VLANs have been accessed correctly. Uh, this port here should be solved also. To make, that will be by making, by making it this one as an ether channel i'm sorry i i, I forgot what to do in one minute okay i will make these two as an ether channel by using like p of course so let's go ahead here and this will be fast ethernet 0 02 and 0 01 connected to what have i done one minute this gig is connected to a fast ethernet take it connected to gigabit ethernet yes i'm sorry and let's check the numbers so that will be one minute yes from this switch it will be zero three and four from this switch it will be one and two okay from here i will also have to fix that big issue by changing this to a gig and just to make sure again this one will be three and four this one will be one and two okay no problem that should be have been fixed right now okay so let's go to the cli of this switch and let's create an ether channel so no definitely no again yes enable configure terminal interface range fast ethernet 0 1 and 2 no. and let's make it 
it will stay as a layer 2 it will be a trunk yes but let's create the channel group 1 mode active and that is good exit interface port channel 1 switch port mode trunk how about that no we cannot because it's an auto so we will solve that by typing a switch port trunk encapsulation dot one q and then mode trunk and what i have ju just did is that by default this multi-layer switch have these interfaces set to trunk auto mode just like the lack p auto mode that does not accept to become uh, a lack p port an aggregation port unless another port start negotiating with it just like the passive so what I did is that I forced it to make it trunk by force encapsulation and then I make this interface trunk so as simple as this interface uh, those these into two interfaces have been bundled in one and that one was turned to trunk as you have noticed that I did log out or exited the physical guys interfaces and then did interface P01 which is the port channel and apply the trunk options or config there this is very important in Cisco okay for the second one the same commands copy it and paste it but just change the numbers of the interfaces uh, configure terminal interface range fast Ethernet 0 3 and 4 um, channel group we can make it the same number no problem one mode either passive or active i would like to make it both active there's some mismatch misprinting here r o u p yes active done good and then uh, there are some this catastrophe is happening i will do that as fast as i can because i should exit and hit interface po1 i should have disabled the interfaces before doing all that and switch port mode trunk that should solve the issue and it will not i'm sorry maybe fast forward ah good that will solve everything to become green come on yes 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 finally okay so no spanning tree here again not anymore because this is a single 200 megabit interface which is called po1 from the side connected to po1 from this side so as a layer 2 technologies now i'm done now i'm certified now i have no problem with layer 2 technologies so far so good okay and how about to do the same to the other ring or at least let us operate this ring troubleshoot it try to do some pings between the devices try to reach another broadcast domain if everything works successfully then we will copy the same commands change some things modify them and paste them here okay so right now how to obtain ip addresses for your pcs huh? now right now we will have two challenges challenge number one will be each vlan here we have three vlans for each device you will have to specify a gateway to allow those different vlans to communicate between them or between themselves how will that be in the previous video we have we needed a router here and we have used the router on stick method by specifying sub interfaces and in the interface of the router and gave those sub interfaces ip addresses which were the default gateways for each vlan and later those vlan could communicate together okay in this video we will use what's called the svi the switch virtual interface this is using some type of hybrid solution which is creating something called interface VLAN that will be a logical interface that resides inside a multi-layer switch just like a loopback in a router there will be an interface VLAN that resides here this interface VLAN will also have an IP address and will also become a gateway for a specific VLAN so I will create three logical interfaces inside the multi-layer switch each one of them will be a default gateway for a vlan later i will give the ip address of it as a gateway for those guys here all the six of them they all of them will have a default gateway heading to this logical device in here because this interface is trunk this interface is a trunk it will reach all the way up there 
and will hit its gateway and that will be good enough and they will route between themselves and all of those devices will be able to see each other it will be very simple creating commands i will show you that in minutes and that would be good okay so let's create some vlans some interface vlans okay so what do we have let's have a label and that label will make it for um for vlan 11 we will have the network of um 10.10.11.0 slash 26 slash 27 will be good do not waste a lot of vlans because we have a few number of devices and for VLAN 12 will be 10.10.12.0 slash 27 and for VLAN 13 will be also 10.10.13.0 slash 27 of course I will make all the dot one 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 as the default gateway for them hope this and uh, the up screen, screen is clear for you and I will start creating the default gateways which are the interface VLANs or we can call it sometimes it's referred to as layer 3 vlans okay so config t um host name i will change the name of this device as the aggregation of ring one that is cool interface vlan 11 i've created an interface vlan what can we do we can give a description or give an ip address okay so ip address of this one will be 10.10 .10 dot 11 dot 1 and that will be slash 27 exit i'm sorry exit as simple as that that's it just give an interface with an ip this will automatically be the gateway for those guys of course you'll have to type the same ip in the gw here okay so interface vlan 12 will be 10.10.12.1 and exit three times up 13 will be three times up 13.1 exit another exit and i'm sorry end and show ip interface brief you can see below i have three new interfaces that like every time i forgot to hit no shot i should have done a no shot for those devices yeah for those interfaces yes so configure terminal interface is there something called range vlan ah let's try this one no shot and and uh, <laughs> did not work well, no i think it should work because sure on hmm. How about we do that manually again? Interface VLAN 11, no shot. And show IP interface brief. If it's still, yeah, then it, the command will work later. No problem. Just we should give an IP and no shutdown. Should be good. No worries. It will work later. Uh, and you will see that in minutes. Okay, so right now we are good. I have created those three interfaces here. They are logical interfaces right here and there is something that i have forgotten to do and that will be very important very important very important for configuring and troubleshooting and this will be creating interface vlan 11 this switch is good but this is a multi-layer switch it's a switch it was born and created as a switch so it does not really understand an interface vlan before it understands the vlan so we will need to create vlans themselves the layer 2 vlans first and then to create an interface vlan which is a layer 3 vlan and i believe this is why we they are still down so the idea will be configure terminal vlan 11 not just an interface vlan 11 you see now the interface vlan 11 is up yeah i should have done that before okay let's give it the same name we can make it the same name a name um uh what was it uh ring one maybe it was um v11 or such thing yeah no problem and then let's create vlan 11 up is also and give it a name and vlan 13 yeah so it will be a no shutdown and also create a layer to vlan so and show ip interface brief everything is up 
right now that should be awesome okay do you have any problem so far i hope not you have the comments below and you can pause and re uh navigate the video if you have something to miss okay uh one last thing how to make those devices have an ip address subnet mask and a gateway so that they would head to their gateway and they would have that routing between them we can give a static IP address just like we did in the past previous lab, but no, I will do DHCP today. How to do DHCP will be very tricky because you will have three VLANs, three different broadcast domains. All of them requires IP addresses from different pools. So yes, I will create three pools inside this multi-layer switch. I will make this multi-layer switch behave like an the router. I will create a DHCP. Three pools of DHCP, each pool is different in IP address, gateway, maybe in subnet mask and DNS and so on. And let's see if those devices will receive a correct IP address from the desired pool. Okay, that will be based on the access ports, of course. And let's check our work. Okay, so right here, I will hit config IP DHCP pool and the pool will be V11 for VLAN 11. The network will be... 10.10.11.0 .10 and it will be a slash 224 slash 27 and give a default gateway to a VLAN 11 which will be 10.10.11.1 which is the IP address of their gateway here good and give them a DNS let's make it the Cloudflare DNS that will be awesome exit and I will replicate the same commands again for creating another pool and making that 12.0 and making that 12.1. It's not that difficult. The NS server exit for 13. Um, also 13. Also 13. The same DNS for all of them. Exit and something very important will be to exclude the gateways so that they will not be given to anyone. 11.1. Um, 12.1. And I believe that I could specify another IP. Yeah, that will, it will be a range. Okay, no problem. Then I'm done. Yes, as fast as that. Yes, that was very fast. And let's see. This PC, if it will receive an IP address from pool 11, not another pool. Okay, so an IP address, DHCP option, and let's hope for the best successful from 11.2, and the gateway is 11.1 slash 27, and the DNS will be 1111. Okay, another PC should also be on VLAN 11. Let's see. That will be 11.3 with the correct info. Let's see if the two guys from VLAN 12 will also behave correctly. Um, correct, 12.2 with the correct gateway. And another one will be 12.3. Thanks a lot. Uh, this one here will be 13.2. Thank you. One last device to check. Hope that we are making use of all that work. Will be the 13.3. Awesome. Right now, in this ring, all of my devices have IP addresses, the subnet mask, a correct mask, a gateway to reach their gateway, and that should make them able to communicate together. Let's see. Let's try our luck and let's try to ping v PCs from the same VLAN and from different VLANs. Let's see. Ping 10.10.11.3, um, which is the other PC near to you. Ping correct, successful, no problem. Um, ping a PC from another VLAN. Let's see. Will that work? Or should I need to enable some feature that I um, did not enable? Let's see. Let's see. Please. This means that my PC here, right here, this guy that have 10.10.11.2 is trying to go to its gateway here and asking it to pass to another gateway, which is this gateway of this VLAN, so that it will lead it to this other PC. 
this passing between an interface VLAN and another inter interface VLAN, this connection between two broadcast domains is not happening, unfortunately. And the reason why is that this switch, this multilayer switch, is still behaving as a switch. I will need further to make it behave as a router. How to do that? By config T IP routing. Just enable the routing core inside this switch. Okay, so routing will start to operate once again. Try to ping the same address of a few minutes ago and let's see the difference right now. Okay, dot 12, dot 2, and hopefully that will fix it. Timeout, ping, ping, and uh, ping, reply. Good. Okay, one last try. Let's make it 13.3, which is the PC that resides here, and let's see if 11 can communicate with 13. Will it ping? Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Okay, so far so good. I have a small enterprise network that contains a ring topology of six switches, a ton of PCs if you would like, and servers, and IP cameras, and IP phones, and printers, whatever. And all of them are on three different VLANs, but they can communicate with each other. So far, so good. Okay. So if this one did work successfully, and they did obtain IP address uh, through DHCP, then how about we do it to the other guys, to this other side? Okay. How to do that will be, uh, I will copy the same commands. We will do not do, do that big, um, like those big efforts of uh, like commands or configure. We will do a lot of copying and pasting. And let's see what might happen. Okay. So let's have it this way. I will need in my notepad again. And let's start study this case. Okay, each switch of those six switches, I will log in, conf t, and I will start to create VLAN 21 and make it ring 2 VLAN 21, and I will create VLAN 22, and I will make it ring 2 VLAN 22. This is very important, and then 23, and give it the name ring 2 VLAN 23. Interface range fast Ethernet 0, 1, and 2. Yes, it's a coincidence, but all of them are fast Ethernet 0, 1, and 2. Trunks and right. Okay. And another thing will be um, before ending, how about to add the access thing also, since all of them have PCs connected to fast Ethernet 0, 3. And only this guy have its PC connected to fast Ethernet 0, 5. So I will fix that by doing something very simple. I will delete this link for a minute. I will take this cable and I will connect it again to fast Ethernet 0, 3. And I will have another cable connected here. So it will be 4 and 5. Good. And three will be for the PC. So all of these six switches right now have fast Ethernet 03 access to a specific VLAN. What VLAN will that be? I will change that. Okay, so this will not be an end, it will be an exit. And interface fast Ethernet 03, um, switch port mode access, switch port access to vlan something it will be 21 22 23 i will have to change the script in every time and what do i need more what do i need in a switch create vlans give name to vlans make some ports either access or trunk done already uh that's it yeah, that will be, uh, that's it. Okay, so this switch and this switch will be to VLAN 21, these two for VLAN 22, these two for VLAN 23. Okay, so I will apply this command or this config to these two here. So copy, CLI, um, enter, and paste. Clear the screen, paste. All done, no errors, no errors, yes, no errors. Let's verify this first switch. Show VLAN brief. 
Yes, three correct VLANs were created with names. VLAN 21 have fast Ethernet 03 access to it. Good, correct. Show interface trunk. All good, all good. Then right to save the config. Okay, head to the other guy. CLI, make it big. Hit paste. What happened? Okay, no problem. I will do it again. Paste. Yes, everything is good. And and write. We will need to add end and write to our script. Okay, and make it this way. And and then write. Good. These two are done. I will have to do these two, but these two should be accessed to VLAN 22 this way. And copy. Login. CLI. Paste. Have a disaster. Something is not working. Uh, why? What's wrong with you? I have done something wrong. No. Copy everything. And Control Shift Six. What are you doing? Control Shift and Six. No. Will not work in Pathfinder. Okay. How about we will go to this switch? CLI, hit enter, hit space, ah, good, and then go back to this switch, big screen, you are very annoying, I will reboot the switch, it's really annoying, since it already have no config, so we can reboot it, no we cannot, there is no power here. Uh, some type of player 2 issue is happening to this guy. Control F6. Nothing happening. Okay, this is wasting of timing because it's doing a script should have solved the issue. Yes, finally. Paste. Thank you. Good. Show VLAN brief. Yes, it's success for VLAN 22. Good. Escape that. Go back to the script. And I will access to VLAN 23 for the last two switches here. This one and this one. So this switch. Fix CLI. And paste. Done. Access to VLAN 23, I hope. Yes, this one right here. And escape this one. CLI. Um, paste. Thank you. Okay, we are done with six switches. That was fa that was fast. Without this annoying guy here doing some things. Yes, only one port is blocked because of spanning tree. And done. Okay, so no further job to do in those switches at all. Uh, next, or oh, actually something is ether channel. I will configure ether channel here. But I will be more careful than the last time by disabling first. The best practice will be to conft interface range pass Ethernet 0, 1, and 2. Shut down, please. That will be very good. Okay? Just shut down. Enable lag P on both devices and then no shut. Would be much better to avoid problems. Okay. So channel um, group. One also mode active. Uh, yes, created exit interface PO1 switch port mode trunk. Okay, it's an auto again switch port trunk encapsulation dot one Q trunk end done. Let's go to the other side, do the same thing, and then to enable the same devices, the same uh, interfaces. Configure terminal interface range fast Ethernet 0, 4, and 5. Um, channel, it doesn't matter to match the same number. I can make a channel group 2, whatever you like. It's the name of an interface only. I can make it either active or passive, passive no problem. Create it successfully. Um, interface PO2, switch port mode, trunk, and one last thing is to come again to interface. Uh, let's try PO1, no shutdown. Will it work? No shot. 
Oh, thank you, because the physicals are down. Yeah, if I disable the PO1, that I can enable it later by enabling PO1. But just because I did that with the range, fast Ethernet 0, 1 and 2, then I will have to unshut those. Thank you. End. Okay, change state to up. Don't care about this red, no worries. Give it two minutes. It's not really flapping, it's just indicators of the pack tracer. Everything is green, no problem. Uh, yes, I did. Oh, yeah, that's good. That is good so far. And how about we head to this device and create the VLANs and the interface VLANs and make them the gateways for this guy? And let's do it this way. No script is really needed, it will be simple. Configure terminal. Host name will be the aggregate device of R2. And start creating VLAN 11. You can name it later. Done. Interface VLAN 11 will be um, an IP add of. We did not specify something really. Uh, let's make it this way. Let's make it um, for VLAN 21. Did I type 11 there? I will delete it. Yeah, God, what have I done? I will delete it immediately. Okay, let's make it 10.10.21.0 slash 26 and VLAN 22 will be 10.10.22.0 slash 26 and VLAN 23 will be 10.10.23.0 slash 26 and I will take it to this edge right here. That should be clear. Go back and delete those three incorrect VLANs. Exit. No interface VLAN 11. Yes, this is how to delete it. No VLANs 11 to 13. Oh, you cannot accept range, you annoying guy. No 11, no 12, no 13. Do show VLAN brief. Yes, clear. Nothing more is there. Good. So we will have to start again by creating VLAN 21, 22, 23. And interface VLAN 21 will be the IP address of 10.10.21.1 um, .10 as a gateway. And that will be slash 26. Good. Uh, create VLAN 22. Thank you. Um, 22. Uh, should I do no shot? I will check that in minutes. And create 23. And let's see dot 23.0. Dot I am done. Um, do show IP interface brief. The do will allow me to show something in the config mode. So that will be up and up. No need for a no shot down. I was mistaken. Previously, okay, up and up, everything is up, everything is cool, no problem. Good. So, just in case one of those devices got an IP and a gateway, it will be able to reach its default gateway, but it will not route because I did something again, and you should uh, right now be able to remember it. That will be IP routing. IP routing. Good. Okay, so far so good. I hope it is. We are about to reach one hour of working. This is about 80% of the lab, yes. We have done it in a really fast way because of scripting. And uh, what's happening to these interfaces? Why are they amber? Is there some logs here? No? Any logs here? No, nothing showing as error or emergency. emergency? Okay, no problem. Good. Uh, the trick of this lab, the second trick, the first trick was the SVI and it's done right now. You can see that it is a gateway for VLANs without a router needed. The second trick will be I will not configure DHCP in this multi-layer switch. Never. Never, ever, ever. I will not configure DHCP at all here. What I will... Because this is a far ring from another region and this type, maybe this is a chip switch that cannot handle DHCP. This is a very expensive model that can't do that. 
I will create the three pools of these devices here and I will have to use DHCP relay for three different broadcast domains that will take the broadcast messages of all those three VLANs and pass it from this interface up to this path this way reaching this interface so yes I will have to enable routing, OSPF, protocols, subnets, addresses so far to make this switch be able to ping this switch and later I will enable DHCP relay and some extra pools here so we will leave that to the end of the lab what we will do here is that to make use of those paths this interface will be a layer 3 interface connected to the core connected to this way, connected to this way, connected again to this way all of them no shut with some OSPF and let's see the difference what I will do is that um, there will be an IP address here and here and both of them will be activated for OSPF area 1 there will be an IP address here with the region which was the edge router and that will be OSPF area 0 there will be another one here connected with OSPF area 0 also and there will be area 2 of OSPF between ring 2 and the core of ring 2 so that will be the backbone area that contains three routers one of them is the edge router two of them are ABRs area border router and they are ABRs because they connect area 0 with area something they should connect area 0 with another area ABR is not a router, an OSPF router that connects area 1 and area 2, area 12 and area 60, never. It connects area 0 with something else. This is extremely important. Okay, so this is an ABR connecting area 0 and 1. This is another ABR connecting area 0 and area 2. So this also has been deleted from CCA. This is not hard or difficult at all. It's not something really annoying to have an air, a multi-area OSPF, but the blueprints were clear. Configure and verify, implement and verify, or whatever in the blueprints was a single area OSPF, like only using area zero. Okay, this is a multi-area, and you will see it very simple. Okay, so let's start by uh, planning some subnets. I will plan for the subnet here, it will be slash 30 to avoid uh, exhausting subnets. Let's make it 192.168 and since this one is area 1.1.0 slash 30. Okay, for this connection here between these two guys and for the second connection between these two guys will be 192.168.2.0 slash 30 and that will be here. For this connection of the core, let's make it a different third subnet specifically for the data center. It will be 172. This is how you distribute and plan your networks and design your network. Whenever you see 10 something, uh, this is inside the town, the city. It's, it's, it's an IP address of a device there in the access layer. Whenever you see 192, um, this is a layer 3 connection between the aggregation and the core. Whenever you see 172 something, then this is an IP address that resides inside the data center. And this is how you verify or how you eliminate the scope of troubleshooting and focus on single area of troubleshooting when something happens. Okay, dot sixteen dot one dot zero slash thirty for this link that's gathering area one and area zero. And this other link here will be 172.16.2.0 slash thirty. Let's make it make it up this way. Okay, let's start OSPF and IP addressing with this guy here. Okay, IP routing is already enabled in this multi-layer switch. So enable configure terminal interface gigabit Ethernet 01. Uh, it's a switch interface, so I will have to make it a no switch port and later give it uh, 192.168.1.2. 252 will be the slash 30. No shutdown is not needed because it's a switch. In this multi layer switch, you will need no switch port. In a router, you will need no shutdown. Case is different. Okay, exit. How about I enable OSPF right now without coming back later? So, uh, router OSPF number one, no problem with the process ID. I will advertise what every single broadcast domain that participates inside this router or this multi-layer switch 
So I have three networks says in the axis layer and one network on the right side the right arm of this left side or left arm of this multi-layer switch so four networks should be advertised in this OSPF all of them inside area number one okay so network 10.10.11.0 um, subnet 25 slash 27 uh, will be 255 minus 224 in the end. I hope that you have more skills of subnetting by studying the course and make lab number one. I have done that as a billion times before. So that will be dot 31 participating in area one. Good. And 11, 12 with the same subnet mask and area. And 13. And also network 192.168.10 slash 30. Yes, this will be um, dot three. I'm sorry, also in area one. Done with OSPF, done with IP addresses. I should not go back again to this router. Will I? I'm sorry, to this multi switch. Yes, I will, but not in a subnetting, in a trick that I will tell you in minutes. Uh, the first core this will be an abr connected to two um, different guys let's see how to configure an abr and how difficult it will will it be it will not enable config t host name of this device will be the core of ring one um, interface gigabit ethernet zero zero um, ip address will be 192.168 i'm sorry 1.1 .1. And of course, here we will need a no shutdown. Everything is green. Thanks a lot. Another interface will be. I'm sorry, don't be that rushed. Gigabit Ethernet 01. And the subnet will be from this, as you can see, 172.16.1. Either one or two, whatever you like. Let's make it all once here. And that will be slash this way. No shutdown will not work because we will need the other guy also. Exit and OSPF. Okay, so router OSPF process ID can be mismatched one, two, whatever. Let's make it unified. Then what to advertise on the right hand side? I will have network this network this way that resides in area one and network 172.16. Also slash 30, but it resides in the back one. That single command line tool had identified that this guy is an ABR because it has two networks, each one in a different area, but one of them, of course, is in area zero. Okay, so and nothing really needed anymore, and I don't believe that I will ever log in here again. I learn those two later. Okay. Okay, I hope that's okay. I hope that all of you are making good use of this lab so far. We are almost done. Um, interface gigabit ethernet 00, an IP address of 1612, uh, 252, and please no shutdown will make it a green. Interface gig 01. An IP address of uh, 16.2.2. I will make it twos here and once on that other side. Uh, it's a design based upon your opinion. And no shut will do nothing because the other guy should also do that. And exit. And OSPF. What do I have to advertise here? Whatever on my left and hand right side. 172.16.1.0 will be in area number. Do you remember the lines that I made? Okay, and as simple as that also. Okay, two networks, both of them resides in area zero. Okay, then end. Uh, both of them are configured, and let's save our settings so far. One last router from the router guys to config, which will be um, enable config T. I have forget to rename this one to make it an edge router, no problem. 
a host name will be car of r2 uh, what do I have to do yes interface gig 01 an IP address of 7262.1 and no shot thank you exit interface gig 00, zero. an IP address uh, of 92.168.2. Uh, where am I where am I where am I uh, let's make it uh, dot one here. Let me make it dot two there. No shot. No shot. Yes, no shot. And since it's a switch, the other side that will automatically be done. Uh, OSPF router. OSPF. Let's advertise seventy two sixteen two dot zero in area. Very important right now, zero and the other network it differs right now. That will be in area two, making this router as a border router again. If you wait a bit of seconds, uh, there will be no neighbor adjacency here because it's connected to this one. There should be a neighbor adjacency. Let's see some show IP OSPF neighbor. Yes, it's two way with this guy here, this one. Uh, through gigabit ethernet zero one and still two way two way two way come on this is not a dr and a bdr this is a point to point ospf is very slow if it was the hrp then it would definitely be done by now because it was 10 time faster not just 10 time uh, you are still stuck come on still two way and in one minute it will become full. No EX start, no exchange, no loading. It will suddenly just become full. Ah. How annoying you are. Let's see what does this one says. Can I see it's full? The other side with 1.1, but with this one it's still. Come on. Ah. Done. Full. And in one minute, just do I become the full? Uh, this is a pack tracer issue, no worries. This is not a real life issue. Okay. Uh, OSPF, 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 OSPF. One guy is left for OSPF here. And that will be uh, given IP address first. Uh, what was the name of this one? Who is up here? Yes, Gigabit Ethernet 01 is up. Okay, so this interface is Gigabit Ethernet 01. So interface gig 01, just an IP address and some OSPF. That will be 192.16.2.2. Yes, how about no? Yes, I'm sorry, because no switch port and then the IP address exit. I have forgot to do that. And advertise all of your networks in OSPF, all of them besides in area two. Three networks from the access layer, which are those, and one network on the right side. So that will be 10.10.21.0 uh, to 192 will be 63 area two and 22, 23, and network. Also, in I'm done. I will save my config. Yes, I am done. With a fast forward right now, if this multi layer switch can ping this multi layer switch, this interface specifically, which is 192.168.1.2, am I correct? Uh, yes, 1.2. Then I will be able to enable, I will be able to enable the it's relay or the IP helper address commands, which is the last step that we will do uh, today. Okay, so let's try our luck. Um, ping 192.168.1.2. Yes, 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 yes. Five out of five are pingable. So this one, show IP route. 
let's see the routing table here it can reach the far network of 192.168.1.0 it is a slash 30 actually it, we can reach it by using OSPF through this interface and this next top thank you thank you thanks a lot and it can reach the three far VLANs and the three close VLANs you see how brilliant and enjoying this one I hope that you are enjoying that also okay good so one last thing will be to create three pools here and to have the DHCP relay to forward the broadcast message to those three pools here okay go ahead go to the switch and let's do the three new pools of those bar guys config t ip dhcp um, pool 21 uh, we can change the name later no problem the network will be 10.10.21.0 and it will be slash 26 the default router of them should be 10.10.21.1 and their dns should be cloudflare thanks a lot done exit one two three four five make it 22 one two three four five make it 22 1 2 3 4 5 make it 22 you see it's not that hard to create three pools 23 uh, done that's it I'm done okay if you have watched chapter 4, then you know what the DHCP relay and an IP helper address is. But the question will be IP helper address or DHCP relay is receiving a broadcast message of DHCP discovery from a device here. And once that broadcast message hits a non broadcast forwarding interface like a layer 3 interface, then that layer 3 interface should use the feature of relay to forward it to some specific well-known IP address which is here so where will I apply the DHCP relay command that is the extremely important thing should I enable it on those two physical addresses since they are the first addresses to receive ports to receive this message or on the PO or they are layer 2 interfaces so they will forward broadcast message anyway I should enable it on this interface here because this is a layer 3 interface that has an IP and can communicate this IP no no and no I should enable it on the three logical layer 3 interface VLANs those three that resides here interface VLAN 21, 22, 23. Whenever a, a message, a broadcast message coming from VLAN 21, it will go forwarding to its gateway, which is this one interface VLAN 21. Interface VLAN 21 then should forward the broadcast message all the way up to this IP address here that will connect it directly to the pools. Yes, so I will have to come to this switch and say the next command and hopefully that it will work interface range vlans 21 22 23 ip helper address forwarded to this ip address here which will be 192.168.1.2 one single command should solve a ton of problems right now and let's see if any of those devices will receive IP address okay let's start with VLAN 21 cross fingers and requesting yes successfully finally 21.2 slash 26 with 21.1 as a gateway and the correct DNS another one I will make sure of all of them and I will ping everything and I will celebrate celebrate this night Let's see. This is from 23. Yes, this one uh, these two are from 23. Yes, that is correct This guy should be from 21 also Okay, let's see if it will receive from 21 
21 and the gateway is 21 let's go to this one this should be from 22 please is is 22.2 thanks a lot this lab will be finished in less than 90 minutes and the previous one required 120 minutes yes correct one last p c to check and let's see our luck our hard job actually how it's working not just luck good so now all the pcs of six different vlans six different pcs of six different vlans in different regions and rings and ospf areas have ip addresses will all be able to ping each other and reach let's choose you you are the chosen one dot one you want to I'm sorry and from the command prompt I will start pinging okay ping your neighbor which has the same VLAN correct pinging ping another guy near to you from another VLAN in the same region or the same ring first one seems to be timeout but the second one should work come on yes yes thanks a lot that's brilliant uh three dot uh what are you doing the three dot three will it pink first one should be timeout and the second one should be a reply thanks a lot i appreciate that how about pinging some guys from the other part of the world from the other ring will be dot eleven dot two ping immediate ping thank you dot twelve dot three ah come on don't be annoying time out oh good good brilliant that's it and one last check for today will be from the sixth VLAN and will it ping please Time out. Reply. Yes, reply. Yes, and reply. And yes, a third reply. If I did it again, then the replies will be from the beginning and the percentage will be 100% successful. Pink. Yes. How about this lab? Did you like it? I hope that you did enjoy it. I hope that it was good for you. Uh, let's uh, color our rings with some light colors like uh, this is a light color um, for this ring those guys here this is a circular ring and another light color like pink um, for this ring here this way and uh, let's have um, some areas I'm sorry, this is, yes, this one, this shape, let's have some areas, let's make it a third colored ring, uh, that should be green, or I would like to make it a blue, from here to here, that will be area 1, okay, and how about area 2, how about we organize a bit more, uh, yes, that would be area 2. And finally, we have to organize area 0. Let's know what are we doing. Yes, I haven't used any green color so far. So it will be starting from this place up to this place. That will be area 0. Okay, we are done for today. Yeah, those are really annoying colors. Not really comfort for the eye. But uh, anyway, so we did for today, we used some ring topology. This is number one. Uh, we did use a lot of VLANs and we did connect those VLANs by using the switch virtual interface. Uh, we used ether channel today uh, on, in both of the rings. Um, also some DHCP pools and some DHCP relay, very important. Uh, OSPF, but that was a multi area. OSPF, am I missing something? 
DSCP, DSC Perlay, SVI, Access, Trunks, everything. Yeah, that should be everything. That should be everything. Okay, so this is almost 90 minutes or 85 minutes. I hope that you did enjoy this entire lab. I hope that it was beneficial for you. I hope that. Uh, everything is really clear the area of comment is always available below this video and i also hope one last thing is to see you in mega lab number three coming very soon okay thanks a lot for watching and see you again goodbye